The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Irenaeus of Lyon once said or wrote, I'm not sure which, probably wrote or we wouldn't know about it today. The glory of God is a human being who is fully alive. He made that bold statement a century or so after Jesus was born. He was writing into response to a group that were later called the Gnostics. The Gnostics believed, and I hope I get this right because there's another person who would know in the, in the congregation today, they believed that the material world, this is a simplified version, including our bodies, that was sort of an afterthought on the part of God. According to them, the body was a prison. And the real goal of life was for the soul to escape the body and move to a higher spiritual realm. Now, it's easy to see why people might have thought about that, thought like that, why some still feel that way today. Bodies let us down. They sag, they creak, and they eventually fail completely. It's easy when seem, things seem bleak to wish, wish that we were anywhere but where we are, dealing with the reality that we are actually in. Irenaeus knew that. He lived in a world even more brutal and precarious than ours. But despite this, he still maintained that the life we have, with all its imperfections and troubles, is a gift to be treasured and used well. What mattered, he said, was that we were fully human, fully alive. So it's interesting to me when I read in today's gospel that Jesus says, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. These words seem to contradict what we've learned about Jesus so far in John's gospel. This is the gospel that tells us the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the gospel that tells the story of how Thomas was encouraged to touch the wounds of the resurrected Christ so he could be sure that Jesus was really flesh again. And this is the gospel that tells us of Jesus turning water into wine, hardly the act of someone who thinks all the flesh is evil. Jesus's, John's Jesus is a man who treasures and loves this world and all those who live in it so much that he's prepared to be completely part of it, even suffering and dying for it. So I don't think Jesus is saying there's anything bad about all this physical stuff and that everything, that, that everything around us is made of. The point he's making is that the physical stuff isn't all there is or all that matters. 
Real life is more than just the physical process. The, the things that happen in our bodies, the plants that grow in the earth, how everything stays together. Whether we call it a soul or a spirit or a consciousness or just our self, we know there is something about us that makes us us. That awareness of ourselves isn't just a matter of fleeting emotions. It has to do with our sense of identity, our sense of worth. And if we lose that, we can feel that we aren't alive at all. In today's gospel, we hear that many of those who followed Jesus had begun to turn away from him. His way was harder than they thought it would be. But for Peter, leaving was not an option. When Jesus said, do you also wish to go away? Peter replies with his own question. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Being with Jesus, listening to him, watching him has so deeply changed Peter that he cannot walk away. He's alive in a way he wasn't before, and even if he did leave, nothing would ever be the same again. He can't just go back to the life he had known, the life of a fisherman concerned with nothing more than the next catch and being able to pay his workers and being able to feed his family. The life he's seen and known has taken root in him, and he cannot cast it aside. This is the life that Jesus refers to as eternal life. Eternal life isn't just life that goes on forever. It's life that is rich and satisfying and deep. It's, not about, qual it's about quality and not quantity. And it has as much to do with the life we live now as it does with life after death. It means that we matter and that our lives mean something, no matter what our individual circumstances are. So how do we come by this precious gift, the thing that brings our soul to life? People look in a lot of different places. They try to find it through material possessions. I was feeling a little emotionally ragged yesterday, and we had that Costco rebate check. So we went to Costco and just bought everything we wanted. <laughs> Didn't manage to spend the whole thing, though. We were too circumspect. But they also look through status and celebrity. But the satisfaction that comes from these things is temporary, and it never actually fills that hole inside of us. Other people try to find the life they long for through obsessive religious observance and attendance. They nervously pile up church activities, trying to attain some impossible moral purity. They become junkies, always looking for the next spiritual fix. But self-obsession, whether it comes through religion, work, play, or chasing fame and fortune, isn't where the Bible says we will find the life that we long for. In fact, it suggests a path that is quite the opposite. The message of scripture, of Jesus, is that the real life we long for only develops when we reach beyond ourselves to love God and our neighbor. It's about being connected, connected to God and connected to others. This is what nourishes us, and this is what Peter has discovered. Peter has connected with God through Jesus. He's seen in him that he, what, something that he knows is of God, even if he can't understand it or explain it. Being around Jesus has taught him to lift his eyes above the limited horizons of his previous life. He finds a life-giving connection to God. And he also finds a new connection to people around him. As he follows Jesus, Peter is forced to live and work alongside people who are very different than he is. People he would have done anything to avoid in the past. His fellow disciples are a motley crew. There's even a tax collector among them, the shunned of all the Jews. But people from different backgrounds and different attitudes than his. 
The people who come to Jesus from help for help are often demanding. There's noisy children, distraught parents, not the kinds of people he would normally hang out with. Sometimes he tries to send them away, but Jesus refuses to let him get away with that. As he learns to accept and love all of these people, he discovers God in them. A God who comes to him in the things he can't change and the realities he can't avoid. To Peter's surprise, their lives enrich his life in a way he never could have imagined. The glory of God is a human being fully alive. If Peter had heard that statement, I think he would have said, Amen. When we open ourselves to God and to one another, when we open ourselves up to wonder and to love, wherever we find it and whatever form it takes, we open ourselves up to the life that is really life, eternal life, which nothing can destroy that life that we would not walk away from, even if we could. Amen. <laughs>